Now, very first story, officials of the South African High Commission have interrogated the three South African ex-police officers who are in the custody of the Bureau of National Investigations. The men were questioned Tuesday morning after the Foreign Affairs Ministry granted access to the High Commission to visit them. Sources close to join news reveal information gathered from the questioning has been sent to the South African National Security Agency in Pretoria to establish the citizen state, citizenship status of the three men. Meanwhile, the largest opposition party has vowed to continue with its security arrangements for their flag bearer despite the controversy. At a news conference on Wednesday, the party questioned the continuing detention of three South African nationals arrested by the Bureau of National Investigations for engaging in acts that threaten the security of the state. The training or upping of their skills is not a one often. And across the party structures, we have people or security committees of our party that our party people are taking through uh, 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 refresher courses all the time. So it will not, this is just like I told you, it's a storm in the teacup anyway. Uh, they were allowed to speak to their lawyers. Uh, we've been there, they asked that we see them today. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure the BNI is aware of our laws. Uh, that uh, for a number of hours, if they think that they must continue to hold them, they need to do the proper thing. So uh, uh, maybe by the time we finish, they, they'll be released. But if not, then they must do the right thing. We did not bring them in directly. We saw the services of uh, a private security, and they know the details of what to do, you understand. There are a lot of you go around most of these private securities. They have instructors that some of them are local, some of them are, you understand. So those ones are details that if you get the names of the security uh, companies, you can deal with. But our main priority is the security of our people, not just high profile. But from what we are seeing, I, just about a week ago or so, I had an interaction with the IGP. He was talking about the so-called vigilantes. I said, how can you be talking about uh, political parties not getting their own personal security for their own personal protection if we cannot be sure of protection by the state? There's no way we can sit back and allow people who support and believe in our cause to suffer danger, potential danger, potential security danger. And I don't think that there's something that we will continue. So we think that, uh, and we'll continue to protect ourselves and make sure that the people of this country's mandate is protected. Right, the new patriotic party has come in for some criticism over its these arrangements, security arrangements, and the bringing in of the three South African nationals to train its people. I'm going to go on to my journal line right now uh, to get to see some of the comments that have been coming in from two parties uh, mainly. Nas the national chairman of the PNC, Bernard Mona, has he's berated the leadership of the new patriotic party for inviting the three South African ex-police officers into the country. According to him, the leadership of the NPP should have considered the delicate nature of the country's security and procedures guiding such conducts before inviting them. We, there was also uh, some comment from the one other political party. I don't have uh, that here immediately. But there's also a comment from Parliament's, uh, the chairman of Parliament's Defense and Interior Committee, Fritz Balfour. He says, the practice of political parties setting up private security groups is a recipe for disaster. But the issue at stake here is about security arrangements or protection for the flag bearers of the various political parties. And the Ghana Police Service says it has already started meetings with these political parties as part of our arrangements to provide security for their flag bearers and their running mates. Director of Police Public Affairs Superintendent Severus Arthur in an interview on the polls disclosed that this will not be the first time they are offering this service to politicians. He explains there was a similar arrangement in 2012. What we did 2012 and we are set to do again is to provide police escort 
police security for flag bearers and their running mates. We did it in 2012 as part of the activities of the National Election Security Task Force to ensure that the election is secured. Mm. We have put in place some of these measures. And we, uh, because I was involved in 2012, I know it happened in 2012. We are going to continue this year. And so we are even meeting the various stakeholders to the elections. We have already met the leadership of the youth groups of the political parties. We have met NDC. We have met MPP. And we are going to ensure that we provide the security once again. In 2012, we provided uh, to the extent that uh, Honorable Hassan Ayarega used his escort for more than even four months after the this thing before. We usually, went, usually, when is this done? Is, it, is this given to them right before the elections or at the beginning of that election year? Well, when campaigns heat up, during the electionary campaign, we provide. So when they serve notice of a campaign, then you deploy the men for That them. is so. It's part of our arrangement. But then, even before that, if anybody, even in an ordinary normal situation, expresses concern about his or her security, and therefore request for police, this thing, we provide. OK. So for this year, do you have a specific time that you give these people the protection they require? I cannot put a finger on it now, but it is on the drone. It is, it is part of the uh, facilities that we are providing. Well, Joy News' Central Regional Correspondent, Richard Kojunyaku, has been gathering more information from the El Capitano Hotel at uh, Gona Duakwa in the Central Region, where the three South Africans were lodging and holding their training sessions. He joins me on the line now for with, with more. Good evening to you, Richard. What more have you been able to gather about the operations or the activities of these uh, three South African nationals? Well, uh, first of all, Israel, the El Capitano is in Duakwa, and Duakwa is in the Aguna East district of the Central Region. And El Capitano is not really a huge hotel, but it has a large compound. And I'm told that uh, these three persons lodged in the hotel for about two weeks, and they got about 15 people uh, who they were training. So they trained them in the morning and in the afternoon. And because there is a bush very close to the hotel premises, they used to also extend their training uh, to the bushes as well. But uh, my sources uh, within the hotel tells, uh, tell me that there are a lot of things that were going, a lot of training, physical activities and other things, but they didn't really see huge equipment that these men were training, uh, the 15 people that were there. So this morning I, I spoke with the head of security, that is the district chief executive for the area, and he was telling me that they got intelligence reports that these three men will, uh, have lodged in the hotel and they're training 15 people. And out of the 15 people, uh, there are some indigenous of the area, but there are others too that come for that also they did not know and they came from elsewhere to join them. And um, that is what has been going on at the night. So they sent the BNI and the police and they went to arrest the trainers and not the trainees. So they let the, the trainees off the hook. And so as I speak with you now, those 15 men um, have gone to where they came from. But the, the trainers, uh, that the three suspects, are the persons that are currently in Accra. I have also been speaking with residents of the area, and they told me that they saw that one going on, but they felt that, well, uh, it's a source of employment for some people because 15, they will get employment in the security agencies, or they, they will be bodyguards to some people. And the other people also had some different opinions. They said that, well, if there are some breaches of the law, these people should be dealt with because in the elections, they see that it's going to be fiercely contested. Uh, con uh, contested. And so if these things are allowed to go uh, unpunished, then there will be other things that people would also do in addition to what has happened. All right. Richard, I'm curious about what these uh, 15 people, trainees, look like. Uh, my understanding is that some of them are actually from the are already working with the flag bearer and the, the flag bearer of the new patriotic party, or protecting the flag bearer of the new patriotic party and his vice, Dr. Mamadou Baumia. But the rest you said were selected from within uh, Agona Duakwa. What are their physical build? Are they people you'd say are well built and looking like security people? Well, they are not. Uh Slim because they, they, they look like the macho men we know. Uh, some of them too, they are not the macho men type, but they have 
somebody and uh, if people are watching you, they are not like Israelite you, your type, because they are masculine dogs and they have a lot of flesh on their body. And so these are the people, the, the, the three people were training, the three suspects were training. All right. Thank you very much, Arishuj Kurunyako. And he was joining us from the central region with details about uh, the El Capitano Hotel, where we're told that these three uh, South African nationals were training some 15 people to be part of the security team of the uh, new patriotic party. You're watching Joy News Prime. We're taking a break, but we have more stories coming up. Please don't go away. You're welcome back to Joy News Prime. Now, four people are critically injured after a scuffle with two armed robbers at Impram Prum, a server of Accra. The robbers who tried escaping after robbing a forex bureau in the area this afternoon are in the grips of the police. Elfua Evans Chinri was at the scene and uh, has, has put together this report. We were in our office when we heard a noise from outside. So we rushed to see what was going on when we realized that there was uh, like an robbers that has been like we chased to the, our, our yard. So well, our security also came inside and told us, told us to enter into the office and close the gate. When he went back, when he returned back, then the one of the robbers shot him. Shot him in the mouth. That's your security man? That was our security man. Okay. You shot him in the mouth? Yes, please. Okay. So we rushed and took him to the hospital. Where but we also saw one of the workers in the royal house, those building the, those, the contractors. But they, the robbers didn't have any mask on. Are, are they people you've seen around in the area before? No, 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 no. We've never seen any, any one of them before. Okay. So, so what did they want from your office? They were chased and they ran into the office. Oh, okay. They were chased from Akaneshi to Yahudomen and they ran into the yard. So there, we just came out and we saw our security man shot. So you have to... He was bleeding. Yeah, yeah, very, very bleeding. So you have to take him to the hospital. Okay, so how is he doing now? He's okay now. The doctor said he'll be coming tomorrow to take out the bullets in his mouth. So yeah, we'll give him some drugs to for the police to calm down a bit. Um, I was being sent, when I came back, I got to the office. On the way in, and people told me that this is what has happened. So when I got here, there was nobody in there. And I was told that oh, arm robbers came here to rob our money, and they were on their way going. So I tried to follow them up. So on the way, I followed them to Ainfi. When we got there, there was, I mean, a policeman over there trying to do something. When I got, before I got there, they've already arrested one over there, that he was even putting on handcuffs and all that, thing. and we took him to police hospital. They said we should take him to the, the condition that he is, is too much, so we should take him to the hospital for him to be treated. So we took him over there. But when I got back, what I was being told was that, at the, and if you know, the people were having the money, they were trying to struggle with them. One of the policemen got the money, but other guys were trying to struggle the money with the policeman, the, it was a policeman. They were trying to struggle with him, and afterwards we couldn't find the rest of the money. So right now we don't know where the rest of the money. Who was in the Who was in the office? Who was there in there? Three colleagues in the office: two boys and one girl. And, and where are they now? Two is going to the hospital. So they've all been injured. Only two. One had an accident recently, so he's not well fit. So when they hit him, he had a distance so he has been rushed to the hospital and the lady too over there too they used the gun to hit his forehead so he also get a cut so she has also been taken to the hospital so how much money were they able to get away with so far when i got there all the money in the safe everything they took everything away everything you can't tell us how much money it was how much oh the money i can't tell i can't tell but it was in in, in which which currency? A lot of currency. They took currency in the cities. Dollar, euro, pounds, all the currency. We are having all the currency in there. Right, so there was uh, Ifwa Evans Chinri actually interacting with some eyewitnesses in the area, in the vicinity where the ro this robbery or attempted robbery took place. Uh, Ifwa joins me in the studio now. Good evening to you, Ifwa. Mm -hmm. So we've heard the testimonies of uh, the, the witnesses at yeah. the, in the vicinity of the, of the... Can you tell us 
what exactly happened? Can you put it all together from uh, the accounts you, you have heard or gathered at the scene? Okay, so what happened, what actually happened this afternoon was that two armed robbers succeeded in robbing two, two of them. Yes, succeeded. Not more than two. Not more than two. That's what we were told when we got there. Two armed robbers succeeded in robbing a forex brew at in Pamprom, a suburb of Accra here. And they, in that process, they injured four people. So what happened was that they got to the forex brew, they pretended they were there to change money. And then in the process, they, they hit one of the attendants. There were three of them. They hit one with a gun and then fought with the others. You know, so all three were injured and were sent. They were rushed to the hospital. So they decided to, they took to their heels, they, they sped off. And then the crowd and the residents around the area decided to follow them you know, chase them. So those who couldn't keep up with them decided to use motorbikes, you know, so they, they still couldn't catch up with them. And then, then they decided to jump the wall, you know, scale the wall, but it didn't work. So the police came in, they, were, they engaged in a shootout with the police and one of them got injured. So there was injured. a shootout actually? There was a shootout and one of them got injured. So it didn't really happen at the Ahimfia Chapel, as we were told before. They, they just tried to escape and use that route, you know, yeah, so that's that's actually what happened. So I spoke with a guy at the Forex Bureau where he said that they made away with an unspecified amount of money. He couldn't tell us how much money they made away with. So, but the, the attendants there have been injured and the, the guys who robbed them have been arrested by the police. So that's the information that we got. What, what is there. the police saying about all of that? Well, as the, to the, how the police many declined to speak with the media. That's, that's what happened. They, they declined to speak. But one police officer I was speaking with said that uh, they, they got in there, pretended that, you know, they were there to change money, but then they attacked the, the, the guys over there. Essentially, so the information he gave you was no different from what the witnesses yes, had told you. what the witnesses told me. So that's ex actually what happened. All right, thank you very much, uh, Efwa Evans Chinri, and uh, she was at the scene of this robbery incident here in Accra. In other news, Minister of Employment and Labor Relations, Arun Agrisu, has announced plans to streamline recruitment of Ghanaian migrants who travel to the Gulf regions in search of work. The migrants who are promised juicy jobs arrive in these countries only to meet non-existing jobs and also to be subjected to dehumanizing treatment. The Inter-Ministerial Committee, according to the Labor Minister, will clamp down on illegal recruiting firms. Most migrants who travel to the Gulf countries are either skilled or unskilled employees in search of greener pastures. The desperate job seekers are usually given raw deals by the recruiting companies upon reaching the destination countries. In a bid to restructure and bring relief to migrants, the Ministry of Employment and Labor Relations, in partnership with the Foreign Affairs and the Interior Ministries, are working towards streamlining the trend. Haruna Idrisu, in an interview with Joy News, threatened to deal ruthlessly with recruiting companies that will break the regime expected to be instituted in the coming days. As much as we support export of services abroad, including Ghanaian citizens, it has to be done with a pledge that they will be treated with honor and dignity. And then compensation, when it comes to even deportation, how they get back home, maybe some insurance mechanism and other issues. So we had a meeting hosted by the foreign minister to discuss the issue and particularly to focus on the Arab Gulf, Saudi Arabia, and one that we are now considering with the Jordanian delegation. Review and sign on to an, a memorandum of understanding which protects the honor and dignity of our citizens likely to be recruited and deployed abroad as domestic or house help. We've also accordingly requested that the police should clamp down on all illegal recruiting agencies in the country and to deal decisively and ruthlessly with them in accordance with Ghanaian uh, law. When Foreign Affairs Minister Hannah Tete also charged the companies in the industry to avoid possible punitive actions once protocols are instituted. We want you to consider yourselves as persons who are there to set an example of what the best practice is and to encourage those of your members who have not properly registered to do so within the shortest possible time frame. Because I expect that going forward after this meeting, both the Ministry of Employment, the Labor Department, the Ghana Immigration Service, the Ghana Police Service will take the necessary steps to make those who are non-compliant compliant or shut down their businesses. The meeting, according to her, forms part of a process to create administrative and legal framework to ensure employers operate in a regulated environment.
The Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana has charged Yemen to ensure prompt disbursement of the fertilizer subsidy due farmers. According to the association, most small-scale farmers are unable to access the fertilizer due to unexplained delays. The farmer-based group is also accusing some middlemen of smuggling fertilizers to neighboring countries. National President Abdul Rahman Mohammed says government must investigate and come out clear on why some farmers couldn't benefit from the supposed 180,000 metric tons of subsidized fertilizer meant for the 2015 crop season. Fertilizer plays a key role in crop production due to the loss of soil fertility and the need to increase yield per acre to meet the demand of a growing population. Introduced in 2008, the subsidized fertilizer program is an intervention by government to help farmers increase their yields. This program, though very beneficial to the farmers, faces a lot of challenges. The Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana says these challenges threaten the effectiveness and sustainability of the subsidy program. National President of the Association, Abdul Rahman Mohammed, identified the 2015 fertilizer program as one that failed. Farmers were to benefit from a 180,000 metric tons of fertilizer, but only 900 tons were distributed. Uh, for the 2015 fertilizer subsidy program, did not actually go on well. Farmers who were supposed to benefit it, half of them have actually taken, and then the rest haven't gotten the fertilizer. Whether it is means where we know that the government came out to say that they have been, they have used only 900,000 metro tons inside of 180,000 metro tons. Actually, that is the figure. So it means that it was not utilized. And the issue is that the fertilizer inside of coming on time last year, 2015, it arrived very late. That was somewhere in July. And if you look at the three northern regions, their season start in May, I mean, uh, May, June. You see, so May, June. And if the fertilizer is arriving at July, in July, it is not always the best to the farmer. The peasant farmers are calling for a widening of the subsidy distribution network. Some rural farmers, especially women, were unable to access the subsidized fertilizers because of the distances they have to travel to reach the distribution centers, as well as the disparity in the prices. The EEs, that is the uh, extension offices, they are very few. They are very few in the country. Government himself knows that they are few. And assuming that it is the extension officers that will go around and distribute the, the passbooks to the farmers, sometimes uh, it is not easy for the, the farmers to get it. So governments should come with a, an, a way that the farmers will be able to have access to the fertilizer subsidy, which is meant for them. The MPK government uh, said that this year they are going to sell it at 85 Ghana cities, compound fertilizer. So if it is 85 in Accra, then it should be 85 in the Upper East region. It should be 85 in all the regions because government is paying money to make sure that the fertilizer gets there. The Peasant Farmers Association won government to address the current unrest between nomadic headsmen and farmers in the country as most of their members have been badly affected by the recent empires. Matilda Humaga for Joy News, Accra. Watch and join News Prime. We're taking a break. When we come back, we'll bring you business. But we'll be going back to the story on the armed robbery attack on a forex bro here in Accra Police Station. Right time now for business news and Emmanuel Abajiriafi has joined me. Good evening to you, Emmanuel. Evening, what's, what's coming up in business? Well, in business tonight, uh, it looks like the Private Enterprise Foundation uh, Federation, that's the umbrella body for private businesses, um, are not happy about the banks, various banks' decision to cut down on lending to private businesses for obviously increased rates of non-performing loans. For some time now what do, what would they wish is done about it because it's a decision taken by the banks themselves and they've cited the, the you know default rate mm. Mm. well we spoke to an economist uh, on marketplace and uh, one dr gachi and he's saying that uh, it's, it's not necessary for the banks to actually say that they are cutting down on lending per se but maybe they have to look at 
who or which companies have, a, I mean, a good red credit um, record yeah. of paying up your loans on time and then and do that uh, deal well with well, that company. Hopefully they, they get to resolve it one way or the other. Exactly. It will right. help all Take businesses. Take it away. Right. So in business, the decision by banks to cut back on their lending could lead to the collapse of some businesses. That's the fear of the Private Enterprise Federation, the umbrella body for business associations. Some banks have indicated plans to slow down on lending because of the difficult economic environment which has affected the repayment of loans. Chief Executive Officer of the Federation, Nana Sei Bonsu, tells Drive Business this does not augur well for the growth of enterprises. He also disagrees with suggestions that members of the Federation are to be blamed for the high level of non-performing loans among banks. If you keep your money in the bank and don't pay your, your, your lenders and don't pay the service renders, people who have rendered services to you, and you glorify yourself, look at my bank account, I'm loaded with money, when you owe arrears more than your bank account. So that's what we're talking about. Contractors are owed money, service providers are owed money, government owes left to right, almost to the heavens. So if we're going to glorify ourselves and say that, okay, we've done well, we have, let's make the level playing field. Pay all are dead to private sector because in natural fact private sector is lending to government at no cost to you know to government and it's not right because they actually reducing the private sector's capacity to perform and compromising the ability to survive so government saying that okay we're doing well we have done this and that when the debts to private sector service providers and private sector contractors and all are so hanging in the boats because unless private sector continue to do business it will be a, a a time the private sector was collapsed no taxes no services and then what do we do we are always going to go to the foreign but the foreigners we make sure that we pay them at even cut uh, rates which we don't think is fair Welcome back to Joy News, Frank. We're going back to our earlier story about the robbery at uh, a forex, on the Forex Bureau here in Accra. And I'm joined here in the studio now by uh, Jifa Bampo, who is head of our security desk, and she's been gleaning some additional information or getting some very latest updates on the situation. Good evening to you, Jifa. What more can you tell us? We're, we're gathering that apparently there's, uh, there are a lot more people who are injured. The information that I've managed to gather from the Accra Police Command is that 12 people have been injured, but these are not life-threatening injuries, and so they've been receiving treatment at the um, police hospital. However, um, two people um, who are suspects uh, have been arrested by the police. They are deemed to be part of a gang of four people who attacked this Forex Bureau. One staff member of the Forex Bureau was also injured in this uh, shootout as they attempted or they did collect some of the money from the Forex Bureau amounting to some 160,000 Ghana CDs. The Accra Police Command tells me that they've retrieved most of the money, but they are unwilling to say for now where the money is. But one can assume that it's within uh, or is with the custody of the police. Now, there's CCTV footage I understand the police are looking at to try and apprehend the other two suspects who are currently on the run. So two people have been arrested. They're in the custody of the Accra Police Command, and uh, 12 people have been injured. Um, we know s people in that area were injured. A staff of this Forex Bureau, uh, they lost 160,000 Ghana cities, but we are told that most of the money has been retrieved. retrieved. And also the police retrieved two locally manufactured weapons. Uh, from the scene of the crime, which is near the what they call the old um, Whitechapel uh, area, also in the Kanishi, um, old light, um, first light area. Right. Yeah, so that's where uh, all that happened. Okay. All right, thank you very much, uh, GFL. Now, former President Kofo has downplayed the impact of the leadership crisis that has plagued the new patriotic party on its fortunes in the 2016 general elections. He says Ghanaians will not ignore the performance of the not-so-effective NDC government in deciding who to vote for. In an exclusive interview with Join News' Beatrice Edu, the former president expressed confidence the MPP's problems are behind it, adding that voting the party back into power is the only way Ghanaians can see real improvement in their lives, seeing how miserably their ruling NDC has performed over the past years. My appeal is for the party to hold together, uh, to put 
outside of the arguments across to Ghana uh, in hopes that this year Ghana will favor NPP by returning NPP to power. So you are appealing and hoping that Ghanaians will return the NPP to power. Why should Ghanaians do so? Why do we go to the polls? You ask yourself, why do we vote? We vote to elect, uh, say, a president and also a party uh, into government uh, to go and serve the nation to uh, improve the quality of life for the citizenry of the land. Uh, the constitution, national constitution provides for multi-partyism. So while you try party A for some time and it's not delivering to your expectations, then wisdom will tell you, please change your hand, give the other side a chance. We've tried our brothers and friends of NDC for quite some time. We are moving into eight years now. It's high time, Ghana looked at NPP. But is this not beyond the, what the constitution demands, that there is multi-party system? Is it not rather about what the other party has to offer? What is the NPP well, offering? The, see, the, what the constitution really is saying is that the people are the judges. What realistically should Ghanaians be looking out for? Uh, life is not uh, uh, exactly black and white. There are shades in between the two basic colors. Uh, if you talk of, say, uh, the uh, Dumso <laughs> uh, the crisis uh, being uh, alleviated, another person observing might ask you, what's the cost? How much has it cost us to come out of the woods with this thing? And so you're saying that's what the NPP would have done and would do? I'm telling you. Do you think that the NPP is really ready for the November polls, looking at all the time that the party has wasted dealing with internal issues? Uh, naturally, I would wish that my party um, was holding together firmly. But I tell you, they say a week might be a long time in, in politics. And you said that the elections are in November. I'm telling you, NPP, I expect, would come back together firmly. But because it's, it's not just the looks, which may not be the true story, uh, is the, the quality uh, of the, 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 the servants, the people. President John Dramani Mahama has lauded the leadership style of the late chairman of the opposition New Patriotic Party, Jake Obechabilamte. The president, who signed the Book of Condolence at the deceased residence on Wednesday, said Jake Obechabilamte's leadership style as a party chairman helped to maintain the peace in the country the country currently enjoys. Obechabilamte, we all know the role he played in a democratic process from 1992 to date, served as chairman of the MPP. And um, even in the most turbulent times, you know, when um, adversarial competitiveness was at its height, I mean, people like Jake, you know, uh, maintained the calm head. And um, working together, we've always been able to calm the waters. And that is part of what has created Ghana as a model for democracy in Africa. And so on his passing, it's only fitting that as president of the Republic of Ghana, I come to mourn with the family and um, extend the um, support of government in this difficult time uh, to help the family with any arrangements that they may wish to make. Thank you. Time for sports, and Gary is in charge. Yes, I am. Hi. Yeah, what's coming up? Um, I can see you're getting it. Yeah, yeah, you're getting a new yeah. shave. <laughs> you're getting a new shave. Yeah. That's cool. Yes. What's coming up in sports? Um, uh, Asamajan is injured. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you heard. Ouch. Yeah, he's injured. Um, so it's likely he won't play That's tomorrow. troubling. Yes, it is. Or should we just say... He's oh, injured that's again. That's the most... That's the newsy yeah. part of it. Or he, should we just say uh, the he's having more and more the injuries? Mozam Mozambicans are really no. No, 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 no. So it's okay. it's it's a, a long term problem now because he's having too many injuries, and he's just come back from an injury that set him back a couple of weeks, and then earlier in the year he had another one. Late last year he had another one. So and it's the same thigh. Could could it be 
uh, an indication or telltale signs that probably he should be buying out? Huh? He's 30 years. Okay, 30 30. <laughs> Yes, he's 30 years. 30 30. I was not there when he was born. <laughs> <laughs> All right, carry on with the sports, please. Ah, uh, despite Israel's mischief, the news must go on. Ajman Bedu has decried the latest injury setback to the Ghana captain, and that's how we begin the sport on Prime. Hello, I'm Gary Al Smith with just about 18 hours to kick off of. The AFCON 2017 qualifier at the Accra Sports Stadium. The Black Stars will not have their captain. And it's likely that Majid Waris and Jordan Ayu will start for the national team. Uh, well, he, he woke up from training and we don't know the outcome of the injury. So let's wait and see. But whatever happens, we, we will die for the nation without him or with him. But 120% we need uh, a striker like him. Still at the Black Stars and they are training. We've been observing a lot of things. One of the key ones has been that Adam Larson Quara says return and the possible repercussions, if you like, that that decision by Abraham Grant to bring him back would have. George Addo Jr., my colleague, reports on the telepathy between the returning goalkeeper and the Black Stars goalkeeper's trainer with whom he had issues leading up to his two-year absence from the team. Some months ago, there was real problem between Adam Lassen Kwarase and Nazam Yakubu, who is a goalkeeper's trainer. Adam Lassen Kwarase has decided to join the Black Stars. But we're here to have an idea of what the telepathy between the two is at the moment. We know that Nassam Yakubu has said he's open arms to ensure that he's able to work well with Adam Lassen Kwarase. But we're here to see what is happening between the two of them. The sort of chemistry going into this all-important 2017 Africa Cup of Nations qualifier against Mozambique. Right behind me, the three goalkeepers are in the session at the moment with five minutes just to end before leaving the Sports Stadium. There's Richard Ofori, there's Razak Braima, and there is Adam Lassen Kwarase. Adam Lassen Kwarase is having a face-to-face -face with Nassam Yakubu, and they've had a couple of gazes. He's looked straight in his eyes because Nassam Yakubu has thrown the ball a couple of times and Kwasi has had to catch it. I say in another drill with Nassam Yakubu, has to dive to his left and to his right, and he's doing that with a lot of agility. Of course, he's the goalkeeper that everybody's been looking forward to. Here at the Crossport Stadium, these two didn't meet eye to eye some months ago. Now, this would need a bit of telepathy so we can have an idea of what will happen between Adam Lassen Kwarase and Nassam Yakubu. Okay, there they go, rolling the ball and working. Still yet, there's not been a straight gaze in his eyes, even though there are smiles on the faces. Can't be sure what's happening. I have watched the training for a while and I've seen a couple of close one-on-ones. Yes, you might say they have to work because they are in that department and they have to produce results. But I also had a look at the eye gazes and the smiles that they had at each other. Gives you an indication that it's not as bad as it was at the World Cup or after the World Cup or even before he decided to join the Black Stars. We've given an information really by Abam Grant who is saying that he didn't go to beg any player to come back to the Black Stars. Means that Adam Lassen Kwarase decided to come to the Black Stars because he wanted to. On the evidence of what we have seen right behind me, it looks like they are rolling and getting back to where they used to be before. He complained about training methods. I have seen a couple of drills, including Adam Lassen Kwarase, talking about one and suggesting one of those drills. Maybe from here we could say the two have patched that. But whether it's for true business reasons or it's really to show off and tell us no, that is exactly something that's happening genuinely, we're left to find out there. George Addy Jr. from the Crossport Stadium. All right, and that'll be all for the bulletin. For more news, you can log on to myjoyonline.com where we have the updates of the armed robbery that took place here at the Forex Bureau in Accra. On behalf of the new team, I wish you a good night. Bye-bye.